So like I said last week, having the subfloor in is definitely a good first step. Feels like we're actually moving in the right direction here. But this fan is a little bit weird, I guess. It has some interesting dimensions and stuff, so we gotta figure out what we're gonna do with this space and how we're gonna really maximize it, really kind of design something that's gonna work well for us. So now that the subfloor is in and things are feeling a little bit more manageable, we are gonna take a first pass at layout. We're gonna use our measuring tape and we're gonna try to tape everything out that we wanna see in the van. This is my very rough sketch. Uh, I did it months ago, so it's not accurate, but I'm too lazy to make a new one right now. So we're gonna use it. It's good enough. shoes allowed on the new subfloor. I guess it's kind of a stupid rule considering that once we put the laminate vinyl planks down on this you'll never be able to see it again but I don't know just try to keep it as nice as we can in here. We did spend most of the evening yesterday taping this out to the point where it got dark in here we don't actually have lights yet so I think we did a pretty good job though considering that we couldn't really see what we were doing. The whole point of this here guys is just kind of to try to visualize what kind of space we're going to be working with. This area here is going to be our kitchen and really that's the only open floor space right in this area. Everything else is going to be covered by either cabinets or appliances or the bed which I'm standing on back behind the camera here but right here we are planning to have actually a propane style like RV oven. It's going to have three burners and then a small oven to be able to you know make pizzas in or roast vegetables or whatever it is shannon really likes to cook that was something that was really important for her and then to the left of that we're actually going to have our composting toilet so that it can slide out into this floor space and then slide back in and then on top of that we're going to do a little stainless steel sink and then right here this area is all the bed if you could picture it it's going to be a pretty raised platform bed we're thinking like 30 maybe 32 inches up above the ground and then underneath is going to be all storage and then this little rectangle right here is going to be our fridge it's going to be on slides it will slide out into the living space area here we can access food we are going to be going with a top opening fridge so basically going back to that I've kind of flip-flopped back and forth between the side opening fridges and the top opening ones and they both have their pros and cons right but the idea with this is that we want to be able to have a freezer compartment. So uh, we want to have a dual zone chest fridge where we can have a freezer compartment to be able to keep things frozen and then have the other side for whatever else we need to put in the fridge. So that's our goal with that. Also makes it really easy to fit into this layout. I don't even know if we'd be able to fit a side opening fridge in here when you factor in the fact that we're going to have the oven and then the composting toilet and the sink. And then to complete the layout is this area back here which will be a large bed. And when I say large, like I said before, it's gonna be pretty high up off the ground, covering up most of these windows. We're not too worried about it though, because this fan has way too many windows in it anyways. And then the, the goal, I know I talked about this in a previous video, so I won't go into too much detail, but a portion of the bed, the front part here, is going to drop down and it's going to reveal a little bench seat. So that way one person could sleep at like an angle, Kind of like this if they want to take a nap or just hang out on the bed or whatever it is or even if they want to sit up against the wall with a little desk and a computer and work that would work as well and then the other person could sit on the bench seat and we're going to have like a lagging table kind of set up and obviously there are pros and cons to this kind of layout and using a platform bed and that applies to any layout that you choose to use in shannon's van i really liked her layout in the sprinter the way that she had that bed that kind of folded down from a couch and then went into bed mode and then into couch mode problem with that is that you don't really get as much storage as you would with a platform bed and then it's also kind of a pain to set that thing up and break it down every day like it became a chore for us and didn't, wasn't really that enjoyable. Shannon doesn't want to have to deal with that. She wants to have uh, something that's just a comfortable, constant space that we don't have to break down and set up every single day. And then a huge benefit of that, like I said before, is that you get a ton of storage. Like where I'm sitting right now, 
this area all the way up to my head is going to be a giant storage compartment so we're going to be able to have whatever we need with us on the road and yeah the downside is that we have a little bit less floor space a little bit less living space but i think we're going to be able to make it work next project for today is to take down this headliner we were very torn on this because it's in like really good condition overall so we were thinking maybe trying to figure out a way to keep it but i don't know we don't really like how it looks it doesn't go all the way back there's this stupid section that flaps down from where the wet bath was before so we'd have to figure something out to make it all connect and make it look somewhat decent so we're just we're gonna take it down guys we have a couple of plans in mind and i really want to see what's underneath it i can feel that there is metal framing here over here as well so I think we will be able to use some of the metal that is already in here to be able to attach our new ceiling and come up with something that looks a little nicer. Also, this light doesn't work that's right here, and we need more lights in here than just this thing. Can't just have one broken old 25-year-old light. We need something a little different. Headliners down. And now we have our work cut out for us. Actually picked up a couple of helpers though yesterday evening. So Brian and Kelly actually stopped by yesterday evening. We got to hang out a little bit and he's actually been helping me here with some ideas for the inside of the van. What, what is this called? It's called Polywall. Polywall? This could be our solution. I don't know. This, this uh, it bends. It's very, very malleable. It actually fits right to the contours of the van. I don't know. I mean, I'm thinking like around the window here. Like that would that would probably work, right? We could even clip it in with those old clips. Yeah, I think you could. Met up a few times now. Yeah, it's I was been. just saying. Well, gosh, it was North Dakota, New Hampshire of all places, San Diego, my hometown. Yeah, so now Florida. Literally, like every corner of the country. <laughs> it's a, it's pretty awesome. It's. Yeah. I guess that's part of the whole van yeah, life. Love nomad life, man. Yeah. It's rad. He just got a new box truck, and so we're gonna go check that out yeah, for a second. Yeah, yeah, we'll take a look at it. Yeah, yeah, I'm stoked. I'm in the same place. I'm a little further ahead, but yeah, the build process is always fun. All right, well, this is it. It's a 2010 GMC cutaway van with the Morgan uh, Mini Mover box on it. It's basically what U-Haul uses. Uh, this is a retired U-Haul. It's been uh, vinyl wrapped to hide all their logo and stuff, but this is my new platform. I'm upgrading from a 1991 Chevy G20. So I'm getting some headroom and a little bit more width, uh, but overall it's about the same length. So uh, I'm excited. It's a new chapter of this journey. I've been living in vans for the last seven years. So um, this being year number eight, I figure I'd switch it up and try something new, build it out, and who knows how long I'll use it. But for now, this seems like something that'll work out really good for my lifestyle. I think we've got it figured out. I think we know what we're gonna do for the ceiling. It is definitely a little bit of a weird project with the strange contours of the fan and all the different bends and everything like that. But Brian had a few good ideas, so did Kelly. Kind of just helps to get a few different people to you know put their eyes on it and kind of check it out, especially folks like them who have been living in vans and traveling around for a long time. If you haven't already seen or heard of Brian's channel, Adventure Van Man is what it's called. I'm gonna put a link in the description below. Would definitely recommend checking him out. He's got a lot of really awesome videos from traveling all around the country. It was really awesome being able to catch up with him and see him again and looking forward to the next time that our paths cross. So what we're doing now is trying to come up with like a critical path they call it. Shannon works in construction. I know some of you guys probably know that as like a project manager. She doesn't really work on vans. It's more like big projects, you know, but for this, like we're trying to come up with a similar kind of goal, a schedule, not really like a time schedule, but just an idea of what needs to happen first, what has to happen before something else can happen, mm -hmm. what our lead times look like for certain products that we have to buy, things yeah. like that. Stuff that we haven't ordered yet that we need to order. Just trying to get an idea of making it organized, you know? There's a lot to do. It's very overwhelming in this van, especially now that we have this ridiculous ceiling to deal with. We really need this list so that we don't uh, end up focusing on a thousand things at once and getting distracted and then not getting anything done. Okay, so I think we have a plan of action for the ceiling, but to be able to make it a reality, we're gonna have to bump out these recessed areas of the fiberglass top uh, out to all the same level. So we have something flush to attach to 
the whole way through. So we're gonna install some blocking with some construction adhesive, and then between there, we're gonna add some extra insulation, and we also have to run our wires before we cover things up. So we're gonna run at least the uh, LED puck light wires that we need, um, and our outlet wires before we cover anything up. The other thing we have to do before we cover anything up is uh, switch out this fan. There's already wiring for it that we're gonna use, um, and there's already a hole, so it's gonna be hopefully very easy. Biggest thing is just finding a day where it's not gonna rain. Right. It's been very humid and yeah, it's been very humid and wet. Yeah. You know what I just thought of? If we are replacing these curtains, uh, we should probably do it before we cover them up too. Add that to the list. Yeah, <laughs> adding to the list. Once we have our insulation, blocking, and wiring all set up and we've finished installing the max fan, we can cover everything up and create a blank slate which will help us finish our layout. I do think that the next step here of getting the ceiling done, the walls, covering everything up, doing all the wiring, this is going to be the hardest part of the build, but once we're done with it, We'll then be able to just kind of start building. It'll be the fun stuff, building cabinets, building a kitchen, putting flooring down. Like that's fun, like, that's easy and stuff that we've done before. But this stuff's complicated. It's all gonna be part of the next few videos though, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to y'all in the next one. You gotta be careful you're touching this fan. <laughs> you just got stuff all over you. <laughs> you want some of these clips? For my hair? Yeah. <laughs> Making a list, make the, make the... Leah goes, sorry, cut.